Hello? <clears throat> Dr. Lewis, can you see? Hey. Yep, I can I can see you. How are you? Great, thanks. How are you? Good. Good. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Um hold on for one second. I'm just sure. And Ag, and you don't even have to have your video on. Oh. You can just you can turn that off. It's just going to be audio. It saves some bandwidth. Oh sure. Uh, let's so, see. Not, I like I okay, like like see, like seeing all of the uh, like seeing all the diplomas behind oh, you though. Oh wait, sorry. Hold on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said I said I liked seeing all the diplomas behind oh. you. <laughs> I think I've got my uh, let's see I've got my. Undergrad, a uh, varsity award because I was an NCAA wrestler. My honorable discharge from the Air Force. My Cooley, Cooley uh, diploma. My Illinois law license. My federal law license. Uh, my law enforcement license. My diploma from the police academy at U of I. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff. My my I, my, I love me wall is full. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. No. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, so I appreciate you. You uh, setting, you know, getting the Skype account and doing this for me and being on the show. I really, uh, it's good to talk to you again. Um, what I will do, a couple things, just so you know. I am, um, the show, if you, I don't know, have you listened to many of the episodes? I have not, admittedly. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Um, the show is, is not a bash you over the head, come to Cooley type message. Sure. It is much more a law school success message. Okay. And what I tell all of our alums is if you want to talk about Cooley, awesome. You know, I tell, I make sure people say, make sure people say, or understand we're, we're now Western Michigan University Cooley Law School, especially for grads that were here when it was just Cooley Law School. Okay. Um, but then I also just say, it's up to you to say that, and I'm not going to press it. Um, and I, because I don't want this show to be a, I don't want, I, I, my intention has always been that, yes, this is a part of Cooley, but it is a grassroots type of campaign to show the quality that we offer. So that it's not a bash over the head, coolie, 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 but it is a, and this is an alum from Cooley Law School. Sure. You know, and look at all the great things this person's doing, the success that they've found. Let's talk about that success. And that's kind of the message. Sure. Okay. So, okay. So, so you have, now you are, you have your own firm. Is that right? I do. Uh, as of April, I'm uh, the proprietor of Eric Davis Attorney at Law, a professional corporation. Okay, great. So, and what's the focus on your firm? Um, I do general practice. However, um, like a lot of sole practice, solo practitioners, I do a lot of uh, family law. I do a lot of criminal defense. Again, having a a background in law enforcement, it certainly helped me. And Mm -hmm. then um, I'm the only attorney, I'm sorry, I I think one of maybe two attorneys that, that does immigration law here in Kankakee County, Illinois. Okay. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about the things that you're doing, how you got into the law, um, some of the things that helped you to be successful in law school. And then um, usually we go about about 20 minutes and, and we call it good. Okay. okay. So I'll bring us in and um, and we'll go from there. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Law School Insider. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Lewis, and I'm so excited to be able to have you back with us again this week. This week, we have Eric Davis, who is a solo practitioner and attorney at law in Illinois. He has his own practice and does a little bit of everything. We've talked about solo practitioners in the past, and you know how people that are in solo, that are solo practitioners, do a little bit of everything. So I know that Eric touches things like family law, but he also does immigration law and he does. So you, you get to do a lot of different things, but Eric had a very unique background and a unique journey into going to law school and going through law school. And I wanted to have him on to be able to share that with you. Eric, thanks so much for being on the show this week. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to, to be interviewed by you. So, Eric, to start off today, let's talk about that journey. 
I said that it was a unique journey, and I know that it was a unique journey. You have a law, you have a law background in regards to being an officer, but you also have a a armed services background. So let's talk a little bit about that journey and what was it about the law that drew you in and wanted and, and made you want to be a part of the profession. Well. Um... I went uh, away to the service, uh, and then at the, about the same time, my best friend went away as well. And when we got out of the service, uh, we ended up finishing uh, our bachelor's degrees, and then he ended up going into um, law school uh, after that. I went into police work. So he saw me um, working probably anywhere between 50, 60, sometimes 70-hour weeks between uh, my job at a police department and a second job that I had also had at a bank. And he knew that I would be a lot more personally fulfilled if I um, went to law school and became an attorney. So he's the one who put the bug in my ear, basically he said, look, I see you work uh, as hard as an attorney. You, you should at least you know be rewarded like one. So next thing you know, um, Cooley had rolling admissions. I put my application in, was accepted, and uh, uh, I'm grateful that I was able to uproot my life and and go to uh, Michigan for law school. Now, with some with the background that you have, as I said, you had a military background, you had a a law background, or a police off being a police officer in the past. How did that background prepare you for going into law school and getting through law school? Well, it certainly prepared me for a lot of the criminal law classes. Um, while I'm, I certainly had a, a lot of experience. Again, I was a police officer for I think uh, twelve years. Uh, I had also gone to detective school, um, so uh, the law enforcement background uh, was uh, very helpful in a lot of the criminal procedure classes. Uh, I would have pretty decent, pretty good conversations. Uh, with some of the crim pro professors and some of the criminal law professors, you know, a lot of them are uh, prosecutors or defense attorneys. And we would go around and around because I had a unique, unique perspective. Uh, so that really helped me engage um, at first because, you know, a lot of, you know, you typically start out with uh, some type of criminal law classes and it, that experience really helped me um, uh, keep that engagement going forward. Uh, also, um, when I would study, I, you know, it would be something like, oh, you know what? I know exactly why we, why the police have to Mirandize this um, suspect. Uh, or I would, in my head, I was thinking the, of the things that I was taught at the police academy, like C plus Q equals M, custody plus questioning equals Miranda. Um, and going to law school really put a, um, <clears throat> gave me a, a different perspective as far as that of, of being an attorney. Um, additionally, uh, coincidentally, when I took the bar exam in Illinois, it was heavily, uh, uh, criminal law was heavily tested. So it was asking me questions about situations I have previously been in. So I, it was not only was it just through, um, through the criminal law that I pr was prepared for law school, but fortunately uh, I was, it was able to help me, um, in the, when I took the bar exam. Now, as you got into law school, what was the biggest surprise for you as you started and as you went through those first classes? Well, I've always called Cooley, I'm sorry, Western Michigan Cooley Law School, uh, the great equalizer. Um, it doesn't really matter much of your background. It doesn't matter if your parents were lawyers. Uh, mine was a maintenance man for General Motors. My grandfather was a maintenance man for General Motors. If I wouldn't have gone into the military and had them pay for a lot of my school, uh, I would probably be a maintenance man for General Motors. I mean, there but by the grace of God go I. But um, what really set Cooley apart was that I it wasn't an atmosphere of just staunch academia. Um, there was there was an air of uh, practicality about it. Um, you know, I think the professors are required to have practiced. Um, law for several years before they're allowed to be professors there. So they had a lot of real world experience, which kind of uh, brought it home for me. Uh, again, being that the law is a, kind of a second career for me, uh, I really developed a good rapport with 
the vast majority of my professors because I would lived real life. I wasn't coming straight out of undergrad and uh, they had a lot of practical experience too. So it certainly um, made me feel welcome. Now, many people, as they get into law school, they find their path, they find their niche, and you probably were the same. As you went through law school, were there certain things that you did or that you identified along the way that helped you to find more success that you would recommend others to look into as well? Absolutely. Uh, I was a big fan of uh, Professor Burt Burleson's law office management class, um, he really helped out a lot in that he would bring in attorneys to speak to the class. And I, he was fortunate enough to bring me in shortly after I, I graduated and after I'd started practicing um, as far as giving. And it was great as far as getting an example uh, from, you know, an actual practicing attorney. You know, well, these are some things that, that I found that are best practices or things that you should uh, use as a benchmark for, for certain things. Um, and, uh, as far as other things that, that helped me find my way, I mean, uh, as you know, law school was uh, not the easiest road for me, to say the least. Again, uprooting my life to go to Michigan, um, there was a, a death of a significant other and then <laughs> in my second year. And then in my third year, my, uh, my house burned down. So I kept plugging along. Uh, and um, again, I, I can't say enough about the staff and faculty at Cooley that, that really kind of helped me through those times. Um, and help me find my way. Now let's talk a little bit about those challenges in law school. And everybody, many people may hit roadblocks. Now you hit some very substantial ones, but you persevered and pushed through. Are there things that you did that helped you to be able to to persevere and to be able to get through that? And are there things that others can do to be able to also be to also be able to find that that balance and to be able to find that success in getting through those hurdles? Sure. Uh, I took advantage of almost every uh, resource that Cooley had uh, available for me. Deans uh, Zelensky, Deans Timmer, and Deans, Dean Ward uh, were all crucial in that. They certainly took the time out of their day to, to check up on me, even after the fact, for, for a lot of these things. And um, they let me know that the State Bar of Michigan had uh, counseling services available. Um, they let me know, you know, again, that they certainly didn't just care about me as a number. They let me know that I was an individual and um, they let me know that uh, I was, um, that I was uh, not just, you know, uh, some random student. Uh, again, I, I can't say enough about them. They certainly took their time to, took time out of their, their busy schedules to, to check up on me. Um, other resources, um, you know, the, the learning center on, uh, offers bar review. They offer um, tutoring. There are a lot of different things that Cooley has that uh, I think are certainly underutilized by a lot of the, the students there. But I, I would I, I would certainly encourage um, the students to take advantage if they can. I mean, if it's a free re resource, why not, why not use it? You definitely want to do that. And, and one of the things that I think I'm hearing you say is just to make sure that you have your voice heard, that you get to know the people around you in that you take advantage of the people, uh, that you take advantage of those resources and you take advantage of the resources um, that are available for you as well. So beyond law school, you've gotten into your career, you went through law school, and are there things looking back that you wish that you would have accomplished, that you would have gotten involved in that you hadn't when you were in law school that would have helped you to find success in your career now that you're in it? You know, yes, I wish I would have taken advantage of more opportunities uh, as far as the different clinics that Cooley has. Um, uh, again, I, doing some immigration work, uh, I wish that I would have been uh, in the position to take advantage of the immigration law clinic that Western Michigan uh, offers. Um, I was fortunate enough to work out at the Eaton County um, 
prosecutor's office and the economic crimes unit. Uh, again, having a background in law enforcement and uh, being a law student, uh, I'm sure I could just waltz into any prosecutor's office and immediately get a job if there's one available. I mean, given my my um, experience with that, um, you know, seeing not only seeing things from a from a prosecutor side, but also seeing things from the police officer side uh, would be crucial. Um, th- I would say the biggest thing would be that uh, I wasn't, I didn't take advantage of enough of the clinics that Cooley offers. Also, now that you're in your professional practice, are, what are the, some of the skills that you have found that you may have learned in law school? Or are there skills that you didn't learn in law school that you wish you had that would have prepared you better? So uh, I guess on both sides, are there skills that you did learn that you're very happy that you did learn and that others should learn while in law school? But are there things that you were lacking that you needed to work on or that you needed to build when you got out there that you wish you would have gained while in law school? As far as things that I'm glad that I learned in law school, um, I took trial skills uh, and I do trial work. I think uh, it's commonly called trial advocacy a lot at a lot of other law schools, but um, Professor Russell was uh, key in uh, preparing us, uh, making sure we knew how to how to run a trial, even down to the um, small smallest detail, whether it's you know asking the uh, Asking the the judge if you can approach, or you know, staying in the well. So those those sorts of things. Um, again, the trial advocacy class, the trial skills class, was um, top notch. I, I it truly prepared me for a lot of what I do. Um, as far as things that I wish I would have taken advantage of for for preparation or courses, I, I wish I would have taken pretrial skills. Um, I know a lot of students at Western Michigan who did take it, and um, it truly assisted them in uh, properly writing uh, their pleadings, their drafts, their motions, uh, which is a lot more of what a practicing attorney does. Um, as much as I hate to say it, it's not like TV, and I'm not in a, you know, arguing trial. I'm not arguing cases, and I'm not in trial every single day. Um, it's a lot of, of being a practicing attorney is is drafting uh, legal documents and doing a lot of research. Um, that being said, I also um, had a, a wonderful um, research and writing uh, professor, a couple of them, um, for regular research and writing. I had Professor Herdisco, who now, uh, I believe, works, at one point worked for the uh, Michigan Supreme Court um, uh, and I believe now she's taken a supervisory role in the Michigan Appellate Court. Uh, my uh, advanced uh, research and writing uh, professor was Professor Trudeau, whose credentials speak for themselves. Um, uh, he's a big advocate of uh, plain language, which I sometimes I like, sometimes I don't. It's, uh, situationally, it will it'll depend on um, what I how I prefer to write. If I'm writing to other lawyers, of course, you throw a lot of a lot more. Uh, lawyerly terms, uh, so to speak, if you're dealing with someone who, you know, doesn't have uh, a lot of experience with the law or just isn't, um, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't have that type of, of knowledge, then of course you would, uh, tend to go, uh, write your documents using a little bit more plain language. Um, so all in all, uh, again, of course, I'm incredibly happy with the job that Western Michigan did, um, with my, with my uh, education. Now, this show is all about law school success, as we've been talking about, and the people that are listening are either thinking about law school, they're going through law school. So what would you say to them? What's one or two things that you would say to them that they should be working on, that they should be focusing on, that they should be thinking about, or some, some words of wisdom for them as they are in either moving into law school, moving through law school or moving out of law school? Well, um, <clears throat> again, I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, lecture in Professor Burleson's um, law office management class. And I'll, I'll say the same thing I, I said to those students. 
uh, find your niche. Um, being um, the only attorney in my county that speaks Spanish, I have a huge following uh, already. I've only been in practice for a few years. Um, uh, and just this year is when I formed my own firm. But um, whether it's whether you have a, a background in, say, financial services or banking, reach out to those uh, contacts and um, centers of influence that you have to potentially um, seek out clients for uh, estate planning or, you know, th those sorts of things. Uh, again, in my particular case, I'm the only attorney here that, that speaks any Spanish. So uh, if there um, are uh, Hispanics that, that need help, it's I'm almost assured their business. Uh, they want somebody that, that they can relate to. And that's what a lot of um, lawyering is. If, if you're a solo practitioner, it's selling yourself. And um, I think it was um, Pimsler that said, uh, when you speak to someone, they understand you. But when you speak to them in their language, they take it to heart or, or something along those lines. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But um, again, finding your niche is, is key to, to maintaining a, a successful practice. Well, I truly appreciate you being on the show this week, sharing your journey and sharing the experiences that you have had so far. And I look forward to hearing more about your successes in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, I, again, uh, I can't say enough. Uh, thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, uh, I've always called, again, I've always called Cooley the great equalizer. Um, it gives a lot of people a chance who may not have gotten in somewhere else or may not have the, the time to do a full-time program or maybe they want to pursue their, their JD uh, at night. And a lot, of other pro a lot of other schools just don't have the flexibility that Western Michigan offers. So, uh, you know, it, it was a perfect fit for me. Um, and again, uh, having worked for a firm for two years and then eventually opening my own, um, where I'm, I'm fortunate enough to even already have um, uh, a great paralegal who's um, on, on top of everything for me. Uh, I just I, I, anything, any chance that I would be able to have to to promote Western Michigan Cooley Law would is is uh, it's only something that I'm honored to do. Okay, we're out. All right, thanks. That's great. I really appreciate you being on, Eric. I'll let you know when this goes live. It's probably going to be in a few weeks. Um, so I will let you know when it does go live. Great. I'm assuming you're, you'll edit out all the uhs and the errs. And the, yep. Okay. I will. I will. Oh, Sandy, yeah. I was thinking about that, like, you know, uh, over the thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, I was trying to think of anything else that I think would be pertinent or relevant. Um, uh, Oh, I guess we didn't really talk about where I practice, but I imagine that would, um, uh, oh man, I forgot to mention networking too, as far as the niche after the niche thing. I had some notes. Oh, well, let me just ask this and I can always edit this in. Okay. So hold on. Now you mentioned that you should niche down and that you should find your niche. And I'm, I'm guessing that networking is a big part of that. Now, how did you build your network? to help you to build that niche area for yourself? Unquestionably, networking is key. Um, whether it's joining your local bar association or um, you know, doing a lot of um, social events, um, always have your business cards with you. Um, I personally, again, was, uh, was uh, fortunate enough to have a mentor, my best friend, coincidentally, who had several years of experience um, as an attorney who took me, who flat out said, I'll take you under my wing for the first couple of years. And then afterwards, um, you know, you'll go out on your own. I didn't believe him at first. Uh, I started working for him. I was incredibly happy doing what I do um, with the uh, different life experiences that I have, whether it's military, police, banking. Um, I, I certainly have met a lot of people over the years and that means I have had a lot of um, 
experiences and met a lot of people. So what I'm getting at is that you never know um, who you're going to meet. You never know whether they're going to need some help or whether their cousin is going to need some help. I get referrals uh, constantly from from friends and family of, of former clients, literally uh, probably two calls a week that I, for our clients that I've never met but have been referred into me. So um, networking, again, is, is certainly key, whether it's, like I'd mentioned before, um, you know, former colleagues or uh, whether it's, you know, going out for, uh, you know, birthday celebration for fe- for fellow attorneys because the Bar Association is having something. Um, I can't I can't stress enough how important um, networking is. There's a, an old saying that's it's not necessarily who you know, but who you know knows may be able to help you. Yeah, that's great. Um, oh shoot, there's one other thing. Can we rest- can we start that too? Yeah. What what what's the other thing? Uh, I wanted to mention. Um, uh, on the networking thing um, and kind of a, a crossover into finding your niche and networking. My paralegal is also very um, influential in the Hispanic community here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead and just add it. Um, as far as bringing those two things together, finding your niche and networking, um, knowing the right people again is also crucial. Fortunately for me, my uh, paralegal is very influential in the Hispanic community here. And that's the big connect between me and a lot of my client base. I would say probably 90% of my clients uh, are Hispanic. Uh, I'm half Hispanic myself. Um, again, with a name like with a last name like Davis, you would never guess. Uh, but my mother's family is from Mexico. Um, but uh, again, my paralegal uh, being very involved in the Hispanic community has even drug me out to uh, different events um, and. I'm constantly, you know, gripping and grinning, so to speak, um, which which brings in clients for me. Okay, that sounds great. I will edit that in, and then we'll we'll call it good. Awesome, thank you so much. Hey, thanks, Eric. Great talking to you again. Yeah, great, great hearing from you as well, Dr. Lewis. Um, okay. If there's anything else. Uh, don't hesitate to, to give me a call. If there's anything that, that you want worked in, don't hesitate to give me a buzz. I'll be happy to give you another sound blurb or, or whatever you need. Yeah, not a problem. And if you want, email me. If you have a, Do you have a website? Uh, just a Facebook link, a page. Okay, why don't you send me the link to that, and then um, I will add that into the, into the notes. Okie dokie. I'll send it to you immediately. Okay, sounds great. Thanks again. Thanks, Eric. Take care. Bye-bye.